So let's hop right into it today. Um, this is part two of our networking course, uh, week three, four, five, whatever week it is. Um, we're going to cover this specific information and make sure that you guys are ready for this test coming up and as well as getting into a job. I was just watching some key job documentation today and people were kind of talking about how hard it is to find a job today. And um, I got a couple cool tools later on that I'll show you guys in the course on how to get your job picked up using AI. So right now, most employers are using AI to parse resumes before they even send it off to um, an actual person to look at. So that's the first hurdle you guys are gonna have to jump to actually get your resume in front of a real human being who can make a decision and um, give you guys more insight and give you guys an opportunity. So uh, we'll go over that a little bit later on in the course and that'll be directly correlated to actually getting a job and getting some money in this bad boy. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll definitely give you guys the sauce on that. I got some really good information on that. Um, back to internet connectivity types. Um, the internet connectivity types refer to two diff to different methods or technologies used to establish a connection to the internet. So pretty simple. Um, it's not too, it's pretty straightforward. Everybody knows what the internet is and everybody pretty much is going to know what these um, types of connections are. So a uh, modem versus ONT. A modem is a device that connects a computer to the internet or to an internet service provider and enables communication over a specific type of internet connection such as cable, DSL, or dial-up. Everybody's seen um, DSL. Some of you guys probably don't remember dial-up. Um, or cable being used for the internet. I know I do. I'm 29, so I remember when the computer used to scream and, and churn and lurch and do a bunch, make a whole bunch of noise trying to connect to the internet. And you also couldn't be on the phone, or uh, you know the internet would go out, or just different things. In a cable internet setup, a cable modem is used to connect the computer to the internet by receiving and transmitting data over a cable television infrastructure. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, the cable modem is uh, used, you use that little uh, cord that you use to connect your cable. A lot of people don't really use it anymore since everybody's using streaming services, but back in the day, you used to have to actually patch your TV into a, um, a port that attached to your cable. So uh, moving on, the ONT or the optical network terminal is a device used in fiber optics networks. Fiber optics are more common now because they offer up to a gig worth of speed and they're uh, good for long distances. So uh, it is it acts as a demarcation point between the ISP's fiber optic cable and the customer's network, converting optical signals into electrical signals that can be used by devices and customers' premises. So if you remember what we kind of went over these fiber cables use light basically to transmit data. So the ONT is going to have to translate that light into actual um, optical signals, into electrical signals. So the optical signal is the light that is transferring into actual electrical signals. In a fiber optic internet setup, an ONT is used to convert the optical signals from the ISP's fiber optic cable into an electrical signal that can be used by a router or other network. So that's basically what I just said. It's converting the light that's traveling over those fiber optic cables into um, an actual digital uh, electro, it's, it's basically a translator for your uh, fiber optic network. Um, an ONT is a device used in fiber optic networks It acts as a demarcation point. We already went over this. Um, so let's move on. Cable internet and DSL. Um, let's give an example. So cable internet, we kind of already went over, but DSL, digital subscriber line is a type of internet connection that uses traditional copper telephone lines to transmit digital data. It provides high speed internet access and by utilizing different frequencies for voice and data signals. So this is what I was talking about when back in the day you used to not be able to be on your landline and be on the internet at the same time. A user with DSL internet connects their modem to a telephone jack and establishes an internet connection over their existing telephone line. And we don't really use um, DSL. Dedicated line using fiber optic. Fiber optic is becoming more and more of uh, the norm because of its speed and because of its utility over long distances. 
A dedicated line using fiber optic refers to an internet connection that utilizes a dedicated fiber optic cable exclusively for the customer's use. It provides a high speed, reliable and symmetrical connection, meaning the upload and download speeds are the same. A large business may have a dedicated fiber optic line installed to ensure fast and uninterrupted internet connectivity for their operations, such as data transfers, video conferencing and cloud services. Um, this is something that you would have to talk to your uh, internet provider and they would let you know if they have something serviceable, if they can service you in the area. This is oftentimes uh, the most expensive option for uh, getting your internet service connectivity. But for a business, it would make sense because you don't want to be sharing um, traffic with really anybody else. You don't want to be sharing traffic with um, other businesses and you don't want to be sharing traffic with other people who can slow down your uh, network connectivity. Satellite internet. Satellite internet is a type of internet connection that uses satellites orbiting the earth to transmit and receive data. Uh, people used to have these satellite dishes out in front of their houses and they used to be huge. Uh, and year after year, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually they were uh, deprecated. So it provides internet access to areas where traditional wire connections like cable or DSL are not available. So if you're in like a rural area somewhere in the country, like you might want to actually get a satellite internet connection um, and it, the, the examples are users in remote area rural or on ships at sea can access the internet by a satellite by installing a satellite dish and modem that communicates with satellites in geostationary orbit dial-up internet dial-up internet is an older form of internet connection that uses a telephone line and a modem to establish a connection that operates by dialing a phone number and connecting to an ISP's network through a telephone line. Before a broadband connection became widely available, users would connect to the internet using a dial-up connection where they would hear the distinct sound of the modem dialing and connecting. So if you are over the age of, I would say maybe 26, 27, then you uh, remember these distinct sounds. If you were a 90s kid, then this is, you'll have PTSD when you hear that modem screeching, so. So now we're gonna kind of get into wide area network or area network concepts. Um, a cellular WAN internet refers to an internet connection that utilizes cellular networks such as 3G, 4G, or 5G to provide wireless internet access. It allows users to connect to the internet using cellular data networks on their mobile devices or through dedicated cellular routers. A person using their smartphone to browse the internet is using a cellular uh, wide area network. It's pretty self-explanatory using a cellular router as a backup connection during an outage is utilizing cellular as well. Okay, so tethering and MiFi. They don't really cover this as much in the CompTIA A+, but tethering refers to the process of sharing an internet connection from one device to another. So say you're using your hotspot and somebody's connected to your hotspot to access the internet. That's an example of um, tethering. A person can tether their smartphone to their laptop using a USB cable or by creating a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, allowing the laptop to access the internet using the phone's cellular data connection. If anybody works from home or has any type of remote job, then they've at some point utilized this. I know ha I have, you know, in times where I'm out and about and I don't necessarily want to connect to a public Wi-Fi network because I may be doing things that are um, business related and need to be secured. It's uh, better to hop on your own Wi-Fi than to hop on, you know, Starbucks Wi-Fi where somebody could be performing a man in the middle attack or, you know, snooping on the network. It just provides another level of um, separation between you and potential attackers. MiFi, or short, short for mobile Wi-Fi, is a portable wireless router that allows multiple devices to connect to the internet using cellular data. It creates a local Wi-Fi network that devices can join to access the internet. So MiFi is an example. It's not using the phone. It's using, there are these things called pineapples. And the pineapple is basically a little box, a little router that has um, two antennas that stick out of it. And these are used oftentimes in a uh, man in the middle attack. And what that means is when you are 
on somebody's public internet. Um, a man in the middle attack is when somebody, or matter of fact, a MiFi network, you can use it. So if you watch Silicon, it's a show based on um, an IT startup. And one of the episodes, they had, they were at a convention and they were trying to get specific information from people at the convention. So what they did was they got a bunch of different pineapples and they set them up all around the convention center. And so people were connecting to these pineapple devices, thinking that they were the um, network for either the hotel or whatever public place that they were at. And instead they were connecting to the uh, network of somebody who was their direct competition. And what this means is now once you're connected to my pineapple, I can now sniff your uh, network traffic. It's an easier way for me to sniff your network traffic when we're out in public. And basically all that is, is like, I can see what sites you're visiting, you know, what package you're sending, what, um, it just gives you a basic, like general overview of what type of connections the computer is making and what sites it's uh, reaching out to. So um, a MiFi would be used it's like, for an example, a group of friends on a road trip can use a MiFi device to share a single cellular data connection amongst their smartphones, tablets, and laptops, enabling all devices to access the internet simultaneously. So this is a more um, innocent use case for a pineapple or a MiFi device, but um, there are a lot more sinister use cases and, and we'll learn a little bit more about that during our security portion of the, um, of the course. area networks we kind of covered the cellular wide area network but here are some other terms that are utilized in the CompTIA A+. The term area network is often used as a broad classification to describe various types of networks based on their geographical coverage and purpose. Examples of the area network include local area network, wide area network, metropolitan area network, and others. So you guys, has anybody ever heard of that? Um, an area network, if you haven't, it's basically the terms to describe where you're connect where you're connecting devices and how you're connecting devices so the primary focus of an area network is to facilitate communication and data sharing between devices using the systems within a specific area depending on the scope and requirements different technology and protocols may be utilized to establish to manage the network infrastructure so overall an area network serves as a framework for connecting devices and resources enabling efficient communication resource sharing
so you can pause updates in Windows for like 11 days or however long. I think the limit is like 36 days before um, 